from where I'm sitting. Well, a warm welcome to The Trading Bell. This week on the program, we shall be hosting James Moria, the CEO of Centum Investments. But really, who is James Moria? Let's take a look at his profile. Dr. Moria is the Group Chief Executive Officer and the Managing Director of Centum Investments Company, a position he has held since October 2008. Dr. Moria serves on several boards, including those of Cedian Bank Limited, and Almasi Beverages Limited, where he served as chairman, Nairobi Bottlers Limited, Isuzu East Africa Limited, and Lewa Wildlife Conservancy. Dr. Moria also serves as a director of Centum Exotics Limited, Investpool Holdings Limited, Centum Development Company Limited, and Two Rivers Lifestyle Center Limited. Dr. Moria was also appointed as the chancellor of Machakos University in October 2016. Dr. Moria holds a Bachelor of Law degree from the University of Nairobi and a Doctorate in Business from Machakos University. He is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, a CFA Charter Holder, a Chartered Global Management Accountant, a Fellow of the Kenya Institute of Management and a member of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya. Thank you so much, James, for Thank making you. time for us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Quite a busy day, of course, uh, having yeah. the investor briefing. And um, just what came through your mind as you were preparing for the briefing? No, first, thank you for hosting me here at the NSC. It's great to be here. I've been, you know, as you know, I've been a board member of the NSC. I just retired recently. Sure. So it's with fond memories that I'm, I'm back here. Yeah. Uh, for me, the investor briefing is always, you know, that point in the year when you must give a report card to those who have entrusted you with their capital. Mm -hmm. and, um, and for this was yet another opportunity to do so, and it's a, it's a huge, huge privilege uh, to do so. Mm -hmm. So to, to let them know what you've been doing, what you've been up to, what you've achieved, in the midst of what was, a, what was and is still a fairly difficult uh, operating environment. Sure. Yeah. Let's uh, go <coughs> through the numbers, James, yeah. and yeah. Uh, what stood out this year? This year, what stood out at uh, a consolidated level is improvement in profitability, mm -hmm. both at consolidated and company company level. I think that is that is a major major highlight. We had um, a, a double-digit growth in uh, profitability at the consolidated level, and a significant enhancement in profitability at uh, at a company level, and that was underpinned by several factors. Uh, just to mention a few. Uh, one, we completed several an exit that has been in the pipeline for a while, and that contributed to the performance. Yeah. Two, the underlying portfolio companies we had improved performance this year, as compared to last year. We had we earned a higher dividend this year uh, as opposed to to last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And uh, looking at your projects, uh, James, uh, one of the most iconic, of course, was uh, Two Rivers. Yeah. And um, so far, occupancy is over sixty percent. Yeah. And um, just appraise us on this project, and uh, yeah. was it worthwhile? Uh, definitely. You know, I was at Two Rivers yesterday, uh -huh. and uh, and it's very gratifying when you go to a location like that, which we started from nothing really, mm -hmm. and a day like yesterday, we had twenty thousand people who came to Two Rivers, and to see it teeming with people, shopping. Uh, Black November, I was for me. I was very encouraged, and mm -hmm. um, it's 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 very very fulfilling. So was it worth it? Ab ab absolutely. Uh, this this kind of developments take time. It's a it's a huge development. We are currently seventy six percent let. A project will be around. We are targeting to close a year at ninety, which is March next year. Mm -hmm. uh, even seventy six for the size of the space there is. It's 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 quite a lot. So, Two Rivers just at the beginning of its journey. There are a lot of other developments coming up there. Uh, last year, City Lodge opened. We have Victoria Commercial Bank that's opening their headquarters there soon. We have a number of other residential projects that are in the pipeline. So, we'll be on Two Rivers for a long time. Mm. Uh, and it's sort of painting a canvas that is a big canvas that is never ending. And you're always adding one piece after another. We're building a city. And you know the journey of a thousand miles be begins with the first step. So we are still in the initial steps, and it's it's something we are very proud uh, yeah. project. We are very proud of. All right. Yeah. And uh, you, of course, one of the listed companies at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And uh, 
if you look at the performance, uh, it has been, uh, if I would say, many of the stocks have had a difficult year. Yeah. 2018, of yes. course, coming and off the prolonged election. Yeah. And of course, uh, other factors that happened in the market. Yeah. Um, from your interpretation of the organization, you're, you're doing a number of projects. One, of course, is the industrial park yeah. uh, in Kilifi, yeah. uh, through the tune of about 100 billion shillings. How are you looking to finance this? Um, so let me speak about the industrial park and about our real estate development generally. Our, our model is to develop market validated projects. So we, 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 we conceive it, we go to the market and sell it, and then we build it. So, and once it's market validated, i.e. you have a customer, financing is not difficult. Capital will always follow projects that are addressing real needs of the customer. Sure. So speaking of Ipingo, it's more than an industrial park. That's only one of the uses. We have industrial, we have retail, we have residential. It's, it's a whole city. And so far the sales there have been very encouraging. We, we've been in the market for, for less than six months and total sales to date is just slightly north of one billion in terms of infield developments. And sale of development rights there is another 400 million. So all in in Bipingo, that's about 1.4 billion. So even as you are addressing now providing the infrastructure, you're providing infrastructure on a product that is already, that is already sold. We have, speaking of that, to specifically to your question how you're planning to finance it, each of these projects is financed at the project level, not at the group level. Mm -hmm. So they're able to ha they have their own balance sheet. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to put in equity. Typically, we finance our projects 30% equity at the project level, 70% debt, which is uh, project finance. And it's therefore non-recourse, without recourse to the, to the parent company. Yeah. We have significant appetite from uh, long-term lenders for the various projects. And each one of them is financed individually. So we have a lender who is looking at the industrial park, for example. We have other groups that are financing the, uh, the residential. So each project is financed on its own, its, on its own merits. All right. So the capital is not really the constraint. The constraint is a market. As long as there's a market, will always get financing for, for those projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And uh, of course, uh, Centum has been making headlines uh, for the simple reason that uh, you're one of the companies that uh, actually declared you'd be giving uh, some very interesting dividends to shareholders as well as bonuses to yeah. the staff. Yeah. Um, this year, what's the outlook like? So let me take a step back. A few years ago, we adopted a zero dividend payout policy. Mm. And that is because we're in a growth phase of our organization. That's when we were, actually that was 10 years ago. So we wanted to scale up the organization. To a small organization, we had about 6 billion shillings of assets under management on our balance sheet. And we wanted to scale that up. So to scale it up, we had to retain mm -hmm. the internally generated funds to finance the growth. I think we are now at a scale where we, our focus now is to give our investors an attractive return on their investments and therefore enhance the dividend, dividend payout. So that's one of the things we are focusing on. And to do so, we need to reduce the amount of money we are currently spending on debt service so that we can divert that cash flow to our, to our shareholders. Mm -hmm. So in the next two to three years, as our various debts come to mature, uh, maturity, actually we began that last year, we intend to repay them. Mm -hmm. So our balance sheet uh, three years from now ideally should be debt free. Mm -hmm. And the Centum should be one of those companies because it has a diversified portfolio that should be able to pay its shareholders an attractive yield on their, on, uh, an attractive dividend yield consistently. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the, the focus of the business. Now, on the bonus issue, the reason we, we came up with the policy, you see the bonus is pegged on re realized return that, out okay, let me put it, cash return yeah. that outperforms the market. Mm -hmm. the, the idea there is, is to have a low fixed cost base which is the salary, because the biggest component of total cost in an investment company is people costs. So keep the base low and have the bonus as a variable, mm -hmm. which is dependent on how the business performs. And therefore, Correct. in the years that you don't have a huge cash return, mm. like for example, in the year that has just ended, yeah. when, 20, we didn't achieve, 20, 20, yeah, when we didn't achieve the hard rate, yeah. the bonus was exactly zero. Mm. So then you have a lower cost, mm. cost structure. 
and also to align the interests of management to those of the owners. And has it worked? Uh, the assets of the company have grown 10 times. Mm -hmm. um, the net assets, book value of shareholder funds has grown eight times. And cost to asset ratio is still less than 1% even with the bonus. So I think it has, it has worked. Uh, what's my outlook on uh, that? It depends on how well we perform. Mm -hmm. If we don't perform, we deserve, the staff deserve zero bonus. If there's performance, then they'll get a slice of that, and so will the shareholders. Sure. Yeah. And uh, as we come to the tail end, uh, Moria, of course, uh, you've done a lot when it comes to transformative programs in yeah. society. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, corporate social responsibility is goes without say that yes. uh, it's it's gaining momentum in uh, the corporate yeah. sphere in the country. Mm. We are seeing uh, sustainability reporting. Yeah. Um, are you also leaning towards this? Yes. We, you know, ultimately, you have to get the license of society to operate, and uh, and and we try to align our uh, ESG, environmental social governance pro programs. Yes. To the investments you're doing. So, if I take an example of Ipingo, for example, mm. where we are quite active, one of the one of the decisions we took is. For this project to meaningfully benefit the local community, yeah. the constraint they had was not unemployment. The constraint we found out was the skill set. They did not have the requisite skills. So one of the projects we came up there up with there it was actually uh, education, starting from secondary school. So taking the bright, the best students in the county, and sponsoring them through secondary school, and I think we'll carry on eventually to university. And every year we are taking 50 students. So today I think we are almost 200 students who we are on full scholarships. So taking the best of that society, that was one pillar. But the other pillar is, take, is, is tailoring vocational training programs for the local youth. And now we are on our second uh, cohort. And what was interesting, the idea originally was to skill them with the skills necessary for the development of the project so that then they could be absorbed. But what was interesting is that in the first cohort of 50, immediately after they graduated, they all got opportunities elsewhere, not even in our project, mm. which, which, which proved the hypothesis that what the people there are facing is not an unemployment issue, it's a skills deficiency issue. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's true. Sure. And so that's what we're doing. So just uh, this Friday, the, we launched the second, uh, the second program. We've also sort of, so, so we focused more on, on that particular project it's around educating the people and providing them with the relevant education across the entire uh, entire value chain. And we tailor different programs depending on where we think we can get the biggest impact and to impact the broadest uh, number of people. Because if you're able to skill one person and they get a job and they're able to sustain themselves, they're not just sustaining themselves, they're sustaining their families, the extended community. So the multiplier impact is quite is quite significant. All right. Yeah. All right. And uh, Moria, what's your general sentiment about? Uh, of course, uh, the license from society is very critical, as you've put it. Uh, we know you have a project in Lamu. Yeah. The coal plant. Yeah. Which has uh, hit uh, headwinds, of course. Yes. Uh, because of the environmental concerns as mm. well as uh, the people on the ground. Yeah. Um, how do you intend to navigate through these murky waters? You know, the interesting thing with that project, um, the Amu Power project, where we are one of the investors, that the local community itself, they have no issue with the project. Um, it's been through various motions in the county assembly, and it was approved almost uh, unanimously. Mm. The environmental concerns, while valid, they have been significantly mitigated. The, the IFC or the slash World Bank has various emission as a standard of, 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 of emissions that they provide as guidelines sure. for projects of that nature. And on each of those uh, requirements, that project is way below the World Bank, um, the World Bank uh, standard. So I, my, my own view is that the, the environmental issues have been sufficiently mitigated. When we initially started the project, it was what you would call subcritical. So what was actually specified was a subcritical power plant. Last year, a General Electric came on board and they brought on board technology that now took that power plant to supercritical status. And so it is employing the latest uh, technology and they have 
built recently completed similar power plants in Germany and actually they're building one in Dubai. So from an environmental perspective, we'll be constructing one of the best power plants in the world. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to do in that project, it's more of education, more of saying what we're actually doing. And that's something um, we'll be addressing at, at the project level. All right. Yeah. All right. We do hope uh, the project uh, comes to completion as the timelines have indicated. Thank you for that. Thank right. you for that prayer. Yeah. And uh, James, uh, I just want to get your parting shot. Of course, uh, you're one of the youngest CEOs who is leading a very multifaceted kind of a company yeah. with, with interests across the region. Yeah. I don't know what would be that message you'd want to pass out there, especially to the, the middle class that um, is very hungry for leadership, is hungry for impact, impactful leadership. Um, what drives you really? I think my message is one of hope and optimism. Sometimes I'm accused of being an over, over optimism, an over optimist. Yes. Um, but it's that to have that positivity in and belief in ourselves, and also belief in our country. Uh, many times we tend to see the glass half empty, but I think for you to really see the opportunity, it's important to see it as half full, and we capitalize on the opportunities we have, no matter how small they are. Be, you know, you may start off with something that appears really, really small. And I recall, in fact, on 1st of December, I'll be marking uh, 10 years since I, I took over CEO of Centum. Wow. And, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Mm. And when I came on board, there was only 10 million shillings of cash, mm. and we had an overdraft of 180 million shillings. That's what I started off with. And it appears small, but it's actually big. And if we can learn to work with the little we have, and to work with it efficiently, and to have belief in it, mm. then we have the ability to, to multiply it. So my mindset is that I've, I, I have chosen to be successful at whatever we are engaging and whatever my team engages, engages in, despite the difficulties. And actually the difficulties are good because they keep you sharp. If also it's too easy, sometimes I get, I, I get concerned. Mm. If I go for a week without a major problem coming up somewhere, yeah. I start getting a bit jittery because it's not meant to be that easy. It's meant mm. to be difficult, but that difficulty makes you better. Mm. Um, you know, if you take your challenges with uh, a growth mindset that I can learn from these shortcomings, I can learn from my obstacles, I can get better with effort, um, I think we're in a great environment. And mm -hmm. for me, I'm very excited about the future. Yes, I know the economy is not what it can be, but it's still a great uh, economy. Uh, sometimes I ask myself, which other African country would we rather be investing in? Out of the 54 countries, I'm here to find one that is, in my view, better than Kenya. So I still think we have an, an, an excellent platform and um, a wonderful opportunity to, to continue to invest and to grow our businesses. All right. Yeah. Many thanks, James. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, And uh, congratulations. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's not every day that you hear people being in companies for 10 years with the millennials we yeah. have currently. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like, seems like a year. <laughs> Ten years have gone. Thank you so yeah. much. James Fantastic. Moria there Thank speaking you. to us. Just uh, debunking the myths around the real estate sector and of course giving us an outlook for the company. He's quite optimistic that uh, things are looking up for the real estate sector. And of course uh, we shall definitely be engaging more from Centum in the coming days. Well, for now we want to take a quick look at our market analysis for this week. As you've seen, uh, the last uh, two months or so, the market has been a bit uh, low in terms of the pricing. Yeah. So foreigners have been exiting the market. So if we look at the analysis, there are more net sellers in the market.
Time to take a look at this week's market performance in our market analysis segment. And we're joined by Elizabeth Wangeshi, who is the head of research at NIC Securities. Many thanks, Liz. Thank you for inviting me. Well, Liz, uh, we've seen the NSC 20 share index not performing so well in yes. the last few months. Yes. Um, this week, it's actually shed about 0.44%. Uh, it's at uh, 2,777. Um, is there an explanation behind this? Uh, well, as, as you've seen, uh, the last uh, two months or so, the market has been a bit uh, low in terms of the pricing. Yeah. So foreigners have been exiting the market. So if you look at the analysis, there are more net sellers in the market. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, in the last uh, one week or so, we've seen them now coming back to the market. All right. But now mainly focusing on counters like KCB, Safaricom, Equity, and East Africa breweries. Okay. Yes. So, uh -huh. yeah. So we should see that now at least improving, even if it's on a marginal basis. All right. Yes. And uh, talking still about the NSC Twenty. Ideally, when the year comes to a close, it should yes. be performing much better. Yes. W w where the, why the, the sudden uh, twist in the NSC 20? Because if you compare the numbers, mm -hmm. similar time, last year is not a proper example because of, co of course elections. we had the elections. Yes. But from my history as a journalist mm -hmm. and just monitoring the markets, it's, it's always when we hit December that the markets really outperform. Yes, so I would say that's the expectation. November should at least be more active because December again is more a holiday season. Mm -hmm. So most investors try to lock in their investments this month. But now there are other factors that are now contributing to uh, the performance of the NSC. Mm -hmm. uh, how the companies have been performing if you look at the latest uh, results. And again, uh, even though the fundamentals should drive uh, and show that uh, it, the market is undervalued, investors haven't yet appreciated that. So as you, as you can see, most of the stocks, they are their lowest prices. But yet we haven't seen that uh, inflow of funds as expected. So I'd say there are, there are other underlying factors like the macroeconomic elements. Mm -hmm. So now that could be another thing that could possibly harm that. All right. Yes. And uh, Liz, let's move a bit to some other interesting aspects. Yes. Uh, top movers this week, we're seeing Safaricom moving about 10.756 million shares. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, a surprise move by Kenya Reinsurance Corporation, yes. moving about 2.43 million. It's quite interesting to also see Kenya Power. It's among the top movers, moving about 352,000. But let's briefly talk about Kenya Reinsurance Corporation. Of course, uh, we've seen uh, it had a difficult year. Yes. And uh, as we head off to a close of the year, what are your predictions and how has the insurance industry really performed? Okay, so for Kenya Re, if you look at the pricing in compared to the other companies, it's quite undervalued. If you look at where the price to book is vis-a-vis -vis other insurance companies, then it offers that upside potential. And uh, looking at how this year has been with the CEO coming back again to the company, the fundamentals also are a bit stronger, um, considering that they enjoy the 20% mandatory succession from the insurance companies. So Kenya Re is one of the most stable, if you look, look at even the investment income aspect. So going forward, we definitely expect uh, now investors to appreciate that. But now the only risk Kenya Re faces is the illiquidity, mm. because uh, the government holds the highest stake. So the availabilities of shares to trade is minimal. So it sort of puts off the investors. Uh, the insurance industry at large, uh, there is opportunity. Uh, mostly if you look at even how the pricing ha has been and uh, looking at even the strategies they're trying to improve in terms of like claims, which has been the ma major hindrance in, in the sector. All right. So uh, we saw recently how they have now an integrated system where they can now monitor how motor vehicle claims are moving. So in going forward, we sh should expect to see good results. Interesting. Yes. Always full of depth. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Elizabeth Wangeshi. Speaking to us, just taking a look at the numbers and trying to break them down. Well, time for us now to move to our 
next segment and that is Markets 101. Well, it's now time for my favorite segment, and that is question on the street. Let's take a listen in on this week's question. My name is Sue Beth from Kiambu County. I would love to know what is demutualization. Thank you for the question. This is where a company owned by members is converted to be owned by shareholders. Thank you very much, Liz, for that answer. And uh, of course, uh, we hope that you've learned something out of it. Well, it's now time for our other segment, walking down memory lane, and that is our historical fact for this week. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's episode of The Trading Bell. Many thanks for your valid company. Remember, you can always engage with us on our social media handles appearing at the bottom end of the screen. You can tweet me at Agina Abi, and we'll be able to sample some of your views in our next shows. For now, it is bye-bye from us and the entire team. Have yourselves a lovely weekend ahead. Thank you so much, please.